What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how we can take our shed that we've modeled in SketchUp, move it over into layout so that we can create detailed construction plans from our model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just a reminder that you can download all of the example files from this series um, by visiting the SketchupEssentials.com slash shed and so that's going to give you access to the example files for the flooring and wall framing video um, all the roof structure windows doors and siding and then the floor plan files as well we're going to be adding more stuff to the series as well so if you do want to download those example files to follow along you can do that at that link all of our different framing and other things like that well now let's take it over into layout so that we can create a construction plan or set of construction plans using this model and so the first thing we need to remember when we do that is when we take something over into layout basically what we're going to do is we're going to use our scenes as the views that we're then going to bring into layout and so let's start off with what everyone probably usually wants to create and that's going to be a floor plan and so the way that we're going to generate a floor plan is we're going to start by creating a new scene right here so i'm just going to right click and click on add and i'm just going to move this to the right i have some other scenes from an animation that i did but in this case i want to label this one floor plan so we need to start by creating this view and so the first thing we need to do is go into a top down view right so we're just going to click on this button right here to go to our top down view. So a couple things about this. So first off, obviously our roof is in our way right now. We can't see the actual like walls of our building. So we're going to have to fix that. In addition, notice how when you look at this and you might see it a little bit better if I move back a little, but notice how this is still in per perspective mode. And so since we're in perspective mode, what that means is that means that this isn't truly straight up and down when we look at it from our top view, um, because there is still some perspective going on. So what we want to do is we want to go up to our uh, we want to go to our camera and we want to click on the option for parallel projection. Notice how as soon as we go to parallel projection, this gives us a true straight up and down view, right? And you might see it a little bit better if we go to a front view and toggle it back on. So notice how everything goes to a vanishing point right now. It's not a true straight up and down view until we switch our camera to parallel projection. So anytime you're creating these straight on views for layout, you're going to wanna to make sure to turn off perspective, turn on parallel projection. But let's go ahead and let's create a top down view like this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna update this view. So if we were to take this view right now and send it over to layout, and let's go ahead and do that. So let's do a file send to layout. And so when we do a file send to layout, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make you save your model and then, and so when you send this to layout, notice how what it does is it pops up a number of different template files in here for different page sizes, right? So you've got like tabloid, you've got letter, um, A3, A4. If you click over here or over here, notice there's other options as well. So the title block ones are gonna be sheets that already have a title block set up with information about the project name, other things like that. Um, I think if you have templates loaded in, and I don't think I've gotten my templates loaded into 2021 yet, there might be a tab in here for your templates if you have any of those, um, so that you can select pages that you've already set up as templates. For now though, let's go ahead and let's go with uh, just like the simple ArcD landscape. So that's gonna give us an arc D page size with a preset title block on the right hand side of the page. All right, so now you can see what this did is this placed a viewport showing the view from SketchUp on this page. And so notice how this is pretty much a replica of the view that's on the page over here. So basically what you see inside of this view over here is generally gonna be what you see over here in, in layout. And so if you make any changes, then you can update the reference and this will update with any changes that you have. So first issue that we have is we can't really see inside of our building, right? So what we need to do is we need to add a section cut to our building. So usually what I do is I rotate out of the view right here, and then I come in here and I add a straight up and down section cut. So notice how when you click on the section plane button, if you tap the up arrow key, it'll lock this to the blue axis. And so then what we can do is we can place a section plane in here and be a little careful where you place this. Usually you want this to intersect with your windows and your doors because you wanna see the windows and doors in the view that you're creating. So if I click in here, Right, and we're just gonna go ahead and we can just leave it as section nine for right now. Um, probably not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna click on okay. Well, then I'm gonna click on my floor plan 
right here, and it's gonna take me back to that view. Notice one thing about that is that section plane isn't currently active, so you might need to go find it in your outliner and just set the option to active cut. And you may wanna go ahead and rename this, just floor plan cut, just so you know what it is. But now, if we click off of this, notice how what this has done. So this has created a cut through our building that's now showing us the actual walls in here as opposed to the roof. And one thing I did not do is I did not save the view after I made that change. So you do want to make sure that when you make this an active cut that you right click on this and you update it so that this is now the actual view. So now notice how that section plane has been saved as active right here. One other thing that you might want to change or adjust in this view is you might want to go into your styles and turn off your section fills. So you might have noticed if you look at these that this is filling in a black material in our framing and our walls right here as well as our windows, which is good for some things but not for others. For what I want to do, for my styles, I just want to go to edit, style, and I want to turn off section fill. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this button right here in order to update that with my changes. So now if I click into my floor plan right here, I've got this floor plan view showing my building with the framing that I can then take over to layout. And there's a lot of things we could adjust with this. Um, we can get more in depth than that. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments down below. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this right here. So now I've got this view that goes over into layout. So now if I go over into layout, notice how this view hasn't changed. So the reason for that is because this viewport is currently linked to my SketchUp model. And you can actually manage the links by going to File, Document Setup, and looking under the option for References. So notice how right here, for example, it's gonna show you, okay, we have a link inside of our model. It's this viewport linking back to this SketchUp file right here. And notice how it's red. What that means is that means that the SketchUp file has been saved, but the actual reference in layout hasn't been updated yet. So if I just click on that, and I click on the button for update, what that's gonna do is that's gonna go back and that's gonna update my model reference to the newest version. So it's basically gonna pick up any changes that were made. So now if I click on close and we zoom into this, we can kind of take a look at it and see um, what we've got here. And so lay layout is very in-depth, by the way. Um, I talk a lot more in-depth about it in my course. So if that's something you're interested in, um, I will link to my course in the notes down below. It's just the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But we get a lot more in-depth on what we can do with this. This is going to be more of a high-level overview. Um, but basically what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to um, create a plan from it. And so first thing we need to do is we need to set this viewport to scale because currently it's not to scale right? Um, it's just brought in at a view. So if you click on the SketchUp model function or drop down in the right hand side over here, notice how you can see information about this view. Well, one of the things you can see in here is because our camera is in ortho or non-perspective mode, we can set a scale. So for example, let's say that I wanted to set this to a quarter inch equals one foot like this. Well, notice how when I set that, this changes on my page. And obviously we need this to be a lot bigger. So maybe we would go to like three quarters of an inch, something like that. So that seems to set work pretty well. And so one thing to notice about this is we probably want to take our viewport and adjust the size of it because I'm going to take it and rotate it on my page like this. So notice when I rotate it though, 90 degrees, it's gonna face the proper direction, but you're gonna get this overlap over here. Well, if you don't have this box for preserve scale on resize checked, and then you come in here and you resize, um, especially diagonally, um, your viewport like this, notice how your scale is changing in here, right? So the reason for that is because we don't have this box checked and it's a really easy way to lose your scale of your viewport. What we wanna do is we wanna reset our scale so we're gonna set that to three quarters of an inch equals one foot. But then we wanna take this and we wanna check the box for preserve scale on resize. What that means is that means we can adjust the viewport window right here and notice how our scale stays the same. So that's kind of how we wanna do this. So now we're set up where we've got a floor plan showing our shed in here, right? But there's a few things that are a little bit clunky so for example, I've got my little concrete 
pieces sticking out on here, well, I might not want that to show up on this page. Same with like my trim material right here. So I don't necessarily want the trim that I added in the 3D view to show up in my actual plan right here, because it's just gonna make everything a little bit clunky. So what we can do is we can go back into SketchUp and we can toggle those off. And this is another reason why it's a good idea to put everything on tags um, as you're modeling. So notice, for example, my pure pads, I didn't put them on a tag. Well, all I want to do is I just want to add a pure pads tag. I want to put that group on the pure pads tag like this, and then I want to toggle that off so that they don't show up in this view. Another thing I might do is I might turn my trim off as well. So notice how when I toggle that, that's not going to show up on this page anymore because I don't really want my dimensions locking to the trim um, inside of that view. And so now I've got those two things off. Well, what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to update my view so that it takes all of those changes into account. And then I just want to save my shed model. So I'm going to click on file, save. Well, then we can jump over into layout. We'll notice how those changes aren't reflected in the sheet that we're showing right here. So what we want to do is we can either go to our document setup and update this, or we can just take our viewport, right click on it and click on the button for update model reference. And so when I do that, notice what that does is that now has my trim turned off and it has those pure pads turned off as well. And so now I have this viewport showing kind of what I want it to show. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to start adding dimensions. But one thing that can be important when you're working in layout, because it's really easy to accidentally click and drag over here and move things around. One thing that can be important is locking your view so that it doesn't move. You don't want it to move because it can just mess up everything. So um, what we want to do is we just want to go into our layers right here. And I'm actually going to add a layer I'm going to call this viewport right here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a layer for my SketchUp viewport. Then I'm going to right click on that viewport and click on move to layer viewport right here. Well, now what I can do is I can click the little lock button right here. Well, now if I click and drag, notice how I can't move that around unless I come in here and I unlock it. So that can be a really powerful way to keep your viewport from jumping around on you. One other thing to note is once you've set your camera inside of SketchUp, I do not recommend moving your camera around because it's going to move everything in layout. So once you get this camera location for your floor plan set, do not update this with a new camera location because it's going to break everything over in layout. So once this is set, leave it set. But now, what I want to do is I just want to add some quick dimensions. And usually what I like to do is I like to add a layer for my dimensions or for my markups right here. So I'm just going to add a new layer and I'm just going to call it dimensions. Well, then we can just bring the dimension tool in here and we can click. And in this case, I want to set a dimension that runs from this corner of my framing to this corner of my framing right here. And then I can move my mouse up and down in order to set where that dimension goes. So now I've set a dimension on my sheet. But one thing you might have noticed is the dimension isn't actually showing up on my page. Well, the reason it's not showing up on my page is because if you notice the dimensions is under the viewport in my layers. So what I need to do is I need to move the dimensions up above the viewport right here just by clicking and dragging. Well, notice how when I do that, now my dimensions show up on this page. So your layers in layout work a lot like layers in uh, Photoshop in the sense that the layers that are on top get displayed over the layers that are on the bottom. So if you ever create something and it's not showing up in here, it's probably because you put it on a layer that's uh, lower than a layer uh, um, that's above it that's blocking it. But let's go ahead, let's add some more dimensions in here. All right, so now we have multiple dimensions on our drawing, right? But I don't really like the way that they look, right? They're too small. They don't really show up very well. So I wanna change the way that they look. Well, one of the benefits of putting them all on the same layer is you can adjust them all at the same time. So you could click on one of them, for example, and then go into your um, text style 
and change like the size of the text. So for example, I could make this larger. Um, you could also set the way the dimensions look, other things like that. But notice how with that one, I only adjusted the one dimension. Well, what you could do is you could come down to your dimensions layer. And since all of your dimensions are on this layer, you can right click and you can do a select entities. Well, as soon as you do a select entities, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to adjust all of them at once. So notice how now if I make a change to the size, for example, it's going to change with all of the items, not just one. And that also works with things like your dimension style. So for example, if you wanted your text in the middle of your lines like this, and let's say that you wanted it like perpendicular as well, notice how you can adjust that. So all of those changes are being applied to all of those because we have them all selected. So. So now we've got our first floor plan on our drawing. And usually what I like to do is well, you're probably gonna wanna add an annotation on here as well. So usually what I like to do is I like to add a layer for annotations above the dimensions. So we're gonna add an annotation right here. We're just gonna add a piece of text and we're just gonna call it floor plan. And then you can come in here and you can adjust your text style using the text options right here. So that's one way that we could do this is we could come in here, we could add our layer. And then if we wanted to, we could also use shapes to add things like, for example, let's say that you wanted a symbol or something like that. So you could add that using this tool right here. So, and notice how those are all adjustable live. And we're just using the line and circle tools in here. You could definitely do that. Um, or the other thing you could do is you could use a scrapbook. And we're not gonna get too far into scrapbooks right now. Just know that scrapbooks are basically preset or pre-made things that you can bring into your model. Well, for example, if I was to click into my, uh, if I was to click into my scrapbooks right here, well, notice how there's a drawing name already set. So what I can do is I can click and drag that into my plan. So I can drag that in here and then I can just come in here and I can just adjust this. So I could just call this floor plan. We could draw our scale in here like this and then you're pretty well good to go. So now we've got our first plan that we've created for our shed on this page. So then from there, We've got our floor plan basically set up. You could obviously add more dimensions, but um, this should give you a general idea. But then what we could do is we could either do a file print or a file export. Usually I do the file export to PDF, but what you can do is you can export this to a PDF page, but we could take this page and we could call it floor plan, just like this. And so that's gonna allow us to set our location as well as our resolution um, and then we can export this. So I'm gonna click on export and what that's gonna do is that's gonna export this view to a PDF file. So now you have a PDF plan that's been exported. Um, it's been created for that page style and it's uh, got your scale on here as well. So you could actually scale this because this is exported to scale. So that should give you an idea of how you can get started creating documents inside of layout. Um, let me know if there's something you wanna do with styles, like we could make everything on this black and white. Um, we could also create elevation pages, whatever you guys need. Um, if you want more information about working in layout, I get way more in depth on that inside of my course which you can access at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. So not only does that have interior design and layout um, stuff inside of it, it's also got a community forum where you can ask me questions or talk with other members of the community, as well as we've got live calls where we actually get on live and talk about things in SketchUp. So if you have any questions you need answered live, that's a great place to do that as well. So leave a comment below. Let me know if there's anything else you're interested in in this series. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.